Welcome to Own the Chaos. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. Crash. You son oh, of God. Hold on. Pause. <laughs> Brad and Fat Man Zoom are here to help you own it. They were targeting Wall Street when they should have been targeting Capitol Hill. They should have been targeting DC. This is the same thing, and this is what people keep missing. Taking it to the suits, being relatable and hilarious. You bought GameStop at 400, didn't you? To the moon, baby, to the moon. Get ready to own the chaos in three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Own the Chaos. My name is Brad. That guy over there is Fat Man Zoom. It's Stock Watch Sunday, people. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. We made it our mission to help you own it. Fat Man Zoom, we go one extra day without doing a live stream, and I feel like my whole world has fallen apart. Yeah, I was like, Stock Watch Sunday, should it have a different name since oh, yeah. Monday? Stock Watch Monday, it's yeah. The first for us. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me give you the uh, starting five. Starting five, housekeeping, mysterious gal, Shane Haley, Rudy Brown, and Rob B. Let's go. The start of five. Uh, how many clips are we having tomorrow? Just one? Uh, how many clips? Yeah. We can, have, we can have as many as we want. All right. Post time. What? Post time? Post time. Oh, oh, all right. You, what do you want? What do you want? Three? Three. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next. Do you want you? Okay. Oh, that's me. No, no, you go first. You go all right. first. Is, is I, I got the you, right side. Yeah, I got the right side. Is it? Is that what you always do? Yeah. It's or I go. Come some new. <laughs> <laughs> Something crazy dramatic. Right. You know, I just saw like. Uh, the Graham Stephan ones are, are amazing. Ridiculous. Like, they're ridiculous. All right. Um, Tesla, what is it? It's um, record sales. Tesla, oh, Tesla, record sales in UK. Yeah. Number one. 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 Hold on. <laughs> one. Look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one. That was a great one. All right. Um, What's up, people? Yes. Was that three? Yeah, that was three. Okay. Yeah, was we three. just got to use those three. Yeah. Um, nice golf hat, bro. Thanks. Got that curry. Just Steph Curry. Let people see that. That's the Shout new curry out. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Check it visor. out. I'm loving it. It's so comfortable. I'm not even like a, a visor dude, but you gave them to me. And so I it figured. It looks kind of like a hat. It's hard to tell on camera, it but is, I guess you can yeah. see. It. You yeah, look see like. That. A golfer, whether you don't, you look like you can't decide whether you want to go golfing or whether you want to go to the beach. Why can't I do both? That's probably a good move. Go to Pebble Golf Beach. At the beach. Pebble Beach. <laughs> they got um, a beach at Pebble Beach, right? <laughs> yes, 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 they do. Um, now you look the part, man. Looks good. Thanks. And I'm in my same, just black. That's all right. All Black's black. good too. Black always works. Um, yeah, so anyway, shout out to Steph Curry, shout out to our Under Armour folks, our yes. friends. Yeah. At Under Armour. A lot of them watch. Up. I mean, we're, we're starting to build a real good rapport, I think, with our Under Armour folks. Yeah, maybe we could do some giveaways sometime soon. That'd be awesome. All right, so first off, housekeeping. Um, can we make a short clip about stocks for your six-year-old? Potentially, and I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. we're open to whatever content you guys want to create. Um I told you offline, I don't think I told you to the chaos crew, but I, um, <laughs> I was, I rebalanced mini zooms portfolio. I just had too many stocks yeah. in there. So we, I had like 22 or 23 positions and I spent all of Friday just trimming it, scaling it back, rebalancing. So I got it down to 11. I think the sweet spot is 15, but it was a big moment cause I was able to finally I've been wanting to get MiniZoom a share of Amazon, and I got her. So for those of you who don't know, MiniZoom is my daughter. Um, she has her own investing portfolio. She's aware of most stocks. She's involved in a lot of decisions. But every once in a while, if there's a stock cheap that I think its perceived value is like it's on discount, I'll just throw it in there, buy some. Right. And it just got a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. She so, had what, 20, 22 stocks or something in there? Yeah, 22 positions. I got that down to about 11, but then I added Amazon, which was a big moment. To yeah. add Amazon into that account. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think we can get, I didn't know how much interest there'd be in talking about stocks for kids, grandkids. You know, we talked a little bit about 529s. Yeah. Um, if you guys watched the live stream last Friday, we got into that a little deeper than I thought we would, but it's all good. If you guys want to see that content, 
let us know. I'm down. Yeah, I, I, it's so funny how, like, sometimes the content that we that we struggle to find content to talk about, and then all of a sudden it's like somebody, like, or a group of people really latch onto something we just sure. randomly talk about. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. Uh, Jeff Chow says, uh, uh, Brad Sandtrap Chaos. It's, <laughs> it's more like Brad, Brad quote, Shankopotamus Chaos. Yeah, well, hey, kudos to you, man, because when I've seen you the last couple times in Drive Shack, Number one, you finally... Uh, five iron. Sorry, five iron. God, <laughs> mine's on drive track. Five iron. Um, when, when I see a five iron, you're like, I feel like you're practicing your, your short game a lot more than you were in the past. I only saw you do driver before. Yeah, my, my pitching wedge and my seven iron is really what I've been trying to like... I mean, if you get, get hit better. your seven, you could hit almost anything. Yes. Yeah. So it seems better. I mean, just from looking at the target... It seems like your accuracy is coming a long way. Definitely getting better, for sure. I appreciate is, you noticing. Which is good. Got to get out of that baseball swing. That's been, like, real tough for me forever. But also just getting out of the typical mindset. I feel like everybody just wants to hit driver. I mean, you know how much I – I mean, not that I'm the authority on golfing, <laughs> yeah. but you know how much I practice the driver as opposed to yeah, yeah, my yeah. pitching wedge or my eight iron. You know, it's like – I don't know. It just – it's it's fun to swing hard, but I, I didn't even hit my driver. I hit my three wood, so it yeah. doesn't even matter. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, for you guys out there, hit your pitching wedge a little bit more. Speaking Ain't nothing of, wrong with it. It's not sexy to hit it hundred yards, but it's sexy to hit it six inches from the hole. Speaking of, uh, oh yeah, for sure, that's what she said. Uh, but speaking of Jeff Chow, he texted me. He texted me this afternoon. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He said he hit a ninety-one. This is his, his best. Hell Best yeah. Score. Best score he's ever had. Jeff Chow. Give it up for Jeff Chow, people. Yeah. Give Je him the clap in the Jeff in the is our, our editor, so if you see Jay Chocolate in there. All right, let's get to work, guys. Welcome to Own the Chaos. The stock market is crazy chaotic. Our mission is to help you own it. Um, not a ton going on this yeah. week as by way of earnings, but still a lot to talk about. Yeah. We got a few things on tap. So if you guys haven't been here before, we're got, we got a few topics just on the market, what we expect to see this week. Then we're going to get into the top five stocks we are watching, keyword watching. <laughs> and um, I, we always got to remind you, we're watching these stocks. We're not always buying these stocks. And um, at the end, we got a few new things that we added to it recently, which is Brad's top conviction stocks. There was one other thing that we added. Oh, shit. I don't I'll remember. pull it up. Okay. I'll pull it up. So um, make sure you guys stick around for the end. Go ahead and hit that like button. Um, also, a random shout out. Um, the Pellucci family may be watching right now. Ooh. Yeah, doesn't that sound like, like an important family? Sounds like the mob is watching us. <laughs> <laughs> I wish my last name was that. very strong yes. Italian yes. last name. I think that's how I pronounce it. Palucci. Okay. Palucci. <laughs> um, anyways, shout out to them. She was actually, uh, you probably don't remember her, but the first time she came on in the chat, she was hated a little bit, but. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I forgave her. Whoops. <laughs> so anyways, what's first up? On the agenda, friend. So, um, first order of business is going to be oil. And I know that you guys have been, if, you've, if you're a follower or a fan of the channel, you know we've been talking about oil for a minute. But it's still very relevant. Oil jumped up to $77 a barrel just mm -hmm. in a few moments ago before we went live because uh, the OPEC meetings yet again got pushed back uh, and they just can't get anywhere. So, What's been happening, if you guys have been following this, so the OPEC meeting has been at odds between the UAE and Saudi Arabia. And if you guys don't, aren't familiar with OPEC, it's basically a pact that uh, Middle Eastern countries and Eastern European countries have with each other. You know, they basically get together, uh, it's usually typically once a quarter to try to determine how much output they need based off of demand, all this other stuff. Saudi Arabia has always, always, always just wanted to pump out more oil because they want to get rid of it. They want to sell it. They think that demand's high enough that they're just going to sell all of it. And really, the rest of the world says not so fast. The UAE has been saying definitely not so fast. They want – so uh, the Saudis want to pump 400,000 uh, barrels of oil a day, and um, – the, the UAE basically said it's just not realistic. And so because they're going to continue to throttle the output of oil, um, then uh, the oil prices are going to continue to go up. So $77 a barrel, that's something we haven't seen since 2016, I believe, Fat Man Zoom. So pretty, pretty crazy stuff. 
I've mentioned this before that I think that we could see a hundred dollars a barrel for oil. And so far it's looking like that trajectory could be coming to fruition rather quickly. Yeah. What I was wondering about this and you know, I generally don't, it's good to know the news, but also I don't try to time it. Like if you, if you like oil, invest in oil. Yeah. Yeah. If it's short term swing trade and you want to play the, play the move, obviously oil should do well short term. Me personally, um, I focus a little bit more on long term swing trading, long term investing. And so I'm not terribly bullish on oil. Um, but the one thing I was interested about this situation was it's, a little bit of posturing. Yes. It's a little 100%. bit of, um, it's negotiations. And so how much of this do you think is going to impact oil, oil stocks, energy stocks when the meeting happens and a deal is struck? Cause I got to imagine yeah. this is a big non issue in the long term. It's yeah. So that's exactly right. So when we see oil outputs in new cups, Oh yeah, these cups are Fells are Point cups. Fells Point, yeah. Uh, anyways, the uh, <laughs> Sorry. the um, <laughs> the the oil output w- will increase because demand's going through the roof. It's just not going to be four hundred thousand barrels a day like the Saudis want. So I think that you know, in my opinion, a deal will get struck at some point. It may be somewhere. You know, it might be half that. Yeah. And and we might see a small pullback in oil, but you know with infrastructure with travel with all of that stuff that we've talked about energy and oil continue to be a good one to at least hold on to by the end of the year now to your point i think long term oil is going to be something that i wouldn't want to try to retire off of yeah. but i think in the very near future we're going to see oil prices continue to go up you know not not to stray too far from the topic but i think it's relevant so guys we've been talking about to, uh, a pre-recorded video with our buddy Andrew yeah. um, on crypt, on crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we're gonna get him on Stockwatch Sunday. But th- we recorded that video before we went live tonight, and it was awesome. Yes, it was By great. We had a great conversation. That video should be coming in the next couple of days. Um, if Jeff Chow wouldn't stop screwing around in golfing <laughs> in two ninety ones, let's let's the the editing is contingent upon how much he's golfing. So let's golf, buddy. Let's shoot in the nineties, high nineties. <laughs> but anyways, one of the conversations that we brought up was the idea of long term investing, long term investment strategy, and it could be swing trading as well. But really, the just the age old concepts that that just haven't changed. And I don't want to sit here on our high horse. Like we know, like we know everything. Cause yeah, in the grand scheme of things, we have not been around long, right? But the information has been around long and I was listening to, well, so anyways, we talked about dollar cost averaging and just the same strategies that have been around forever still are the best strategies. Yeah. Dollar cost average time in the market, not timing the market. When will people learn? And that's the reality is like due diligence, believing in companies, understanding like the stuff you guys are invested in. Can you explain it to somebody? Right. And if you can't, I don't understand why you're invested in it. And that's one of the reasons why you've been a little bit hesitant on crypto. Yeah. So anyways, um, I got stuck down the YouTube rabbit hole and I was watching Peter Lynch. You know, Peter Lynch, Mm -hmm. Um, who's I mean, famous uh, hedge fund manager, investor, and he's he actually has a position, has always had a position where he thought that the retail investor should be able to outperform the institutional investors and is uniquely positioned to actually have an advantage over the um, institutional companies, right? Yeah. Institutional investors, which I think we agree upon. That's why this channel is created. This channel is not about to tell you what to buy, what not to buy. It's, a, it's basically to be a community for active investors and really to give you confidence to be able to invest yourself. Not everybody has to, but we believe that we want to put our fate in our own hands, right? So we're one, we have the time, we have the energy to invest, to do their due diligence, to look, to basically do the research. And if we're fortunate to do that, I'd rather bet on myself than some other guy in a C-suite, right? Yeah. Um, Oh shit. Do we just cross our fingers? Yep. We just had a, a minor accident. All right. Oh, shit. Confidence. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Well, if we start sounding like shit, guys, you'll know why in a second. You want to, oh. Can you grab something? 
Okay. What do you want me to grab? Oh, a I towel? Know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, we'll be fine. Let's Housekeeping. Roll with it. Let's roll, roll, roll with it. Um, that's why we don't have nice things. So anyways, guys, <laughs> oh, I was in the, I was in flow state right there. Oh man. Um, but anyways, he just taught, it was funny because this video was from like, it must've been from the eighties. No, no, no. It was the uh, early nineties. Yeah. I think it was 1990. He had talked about just the same things we're hearing today, which is people want the next, you know, 10 bagger. They want yeah. the stock that's going to get them rich quick. And like, and he was just talking about it's just old, reliable stocks. Right. It's the stocks that have been around forever, the companies you believe in and that you know, and not trying to get rich quick, not trying to find the next whatever. Yeah. Don't try to find the next Apple, just buy Apple. Yeah. It's pretty simple. So anyways, um, I think with oil, if you guys believe in oil, then you could buy oil. But if you're trying to chase something because a meeting did or didn't happen, I just I, I think it's just a really uh, worthless exercise. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm, I'm having serious anxiety right now. I am too. Um, let me talk about my next topic. And <laughs> okay, you talk about your next topic. I got to go. I got to go. Put the camera on okay. me. There you go. All right, guys. So the next topic is actually more exciting. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, um, I spilled water. This is what happened. I spilled water. I need a sippy cup, Bodie Bear. You are absolutely right. So anyways, guys, Tesla was just announced that they are not only the, the Model 3 is not only the best selling car in the UK, in addition, the Model 3 is now the number 16 best selling car in the world. I don't know about you guys, but that's incredible. First off, it is, it is far and away the, the best selling EV. So that, they've had that crown for a while, but I think I was, and hopefully Brad will come back for this, but I was really, surprised that it was number 16 now for you that might be obvious um but when you think about all the competition in the entire world and how long tesla's been around specifically the model three <laughs> we can't, we can't. <laughs> oh my god pause can they still hear us okay the model three yeah Okay. I was telling him about the Model 3. As long as we don't sound like we're underwater. Because we're literally underwater. I mean, look how much water is gone, but it looked like a gallon it of water. looked like a lot, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Tesla. Whoa, that got really loud. Uh-oh. <laughs> is that really loud for you guys? Or did you just hit... Did I hit something? Our volume. Is our volume? Oh, somebody said one? yes. Oh, shit. But are we really loud? Did we get really loud? Did we get louder? Not loud and clear, Roger. It sounds good, though. I mean, I'm, okay, I don't mind okay, it. Okay, as long as we're good. Okay. Oh, man. And it just feels like it gets louder and louder. <laughs> what the okay. hell is that? We're good. Can you not? Okay. I mean, put your headphones on. You'll hear it. Oh, shit. <laughs> What was that? There's some crazy feedback. <laughs> Guys, give us a second. Hold on. Which one are you? You're three. Or you're one. Ooh. Test, test, test. Sounds great on their end. Try now. Try now. No, the feedback's still like. Test, 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 test. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go ahead, phoneless. Guess we're buying some, buying a new soundboard tomorrow. Yeah, this thing might not make it. Let's try to get it quick, <laughs> cool. All right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody, as long as everybody, as long as everybody can hear, it's fine. The reverb was real bad. Is it bad on yours too? Yeah, I mean it's it's not no no, no not reverb, but it is so loud, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Just take them off. Um, all right. Anyways, so anyways, t I was telling about Tesla three Model yeah. three, so. Number one EV by far, number sixteen car, best-selling car globally, which is insane. Um, Tesla's only been around for a few years. Tesla Model Three has only the been Model around three, for yeah. years, three years, yeah, three years. Yeah. So that's crazy. Um, so we talked about how Elon Musk had predicted that what was it, the Model Three or the Model Y? The Model Y would be the best-selling car in the world by twenty twenty-two. Yes. We don't. We still think that's far-fetched. Yeah. 
But 16 in the world is incredible and probably more likely than not likely. That, yeah. That they'll do it. Just, you just look at the numbers and the growth. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, um, people like thought that Elon was crazy. Oh, just did too. Shit. All right. So as uh, people keep saying about how they, they doubted, they thought it was crazy that Elon said the, the Model Y could very well be the number one selling car in the world next year. And I know it's just UK. Like it's not, it's not. We're, we're not taking a snapshot of the rest of the world, but that's still very. And for it to be number eight, uh, you know, uh, uh, globally for for just the Model Three, I think that's going to be very, very interesting to see how this plays out over the next eighteen months. I mean, we've been really bullish on Tesla. I know there's a lot of people that think that it's overvalued, think that it's been running too hot. I'm sorry, but they continue to dominate. Yeah, you can invest in the Neos and the Xpengs and all those other cars you want. Look at their numbers. It's insane. Tesla just had a record quarter over 200K deliveries last quarter in quarter two. And you have like Neo with like, what, 6,000 or yeah. something like that? Like, it's not even close. It's not even close. Right. And the only thing that's slowing down Tesla is Tesla. Tesla yep. and their capacity to build cars. So we'll see. Um, I'm excited. Their AI day we haven't really talked about, but that's coming up. Um, a lot of good things going on with Tesla. One more thing I want to bring up. So I want to bring up a topic, and then we'll get into the um, the five, top five stocks. Yeah, MGM, which we've loved. It's a Fat Man Zoom special. Yeah, MGM just pulled an incredible business move, in my opinion. It was announced last week that they had um, bought. 50% of City Center in Las Vegas. So they were 50% partners in a joint venture. Um, and City Center is just like an entertainment complex with a couple of casinos in it. Um, and so I think it was Aria, yeah, Aria and Vidara are in there, which doesn't matter. But they had a joint partnership. They bought the other 50% to be 100% stakeholders in this entertainment complex. And those are very nice casinos, like hot area of the strip. Yeah. They bought it for $2.125 billion. Now, follow me. I'm going to give you a couple numbers, but that's what they bought it for, for their, their, the second half of their 50%. Sorry, the second half of their stake. They then, after they retain 100% ownership of it, they then sold the casinos to, uh, <laughs> to Blackstone Group for $3.89 billion. They paid $2.1 billion and then ended up making money off of the deal. And what Blackstone's going to do is going to lease it back to them for $215 million annually. All right? So leasing it. Yes. Which to me is crazy on, the, on a couple fronts. One is you net positive, right? You netted more money. On the sale. Yeah. Almost doubled it on the sale. And then on top of that, you added recurring revenue. So without getting too deep as far as like how it, the implications for your balance sheet, the reality is like recurring, recurring revenue income is going to be better for the impact of the stock market than just your acquisition because essentially it's, you're talking about your balance sheet versus, balance sheet versus your P&L and yeah. typically stocks move a little bit more based on the P&L. And so I love it because they end up putting more money and more cash into their company. We've talked about they have the best balance sheet in the world. So they'll have um, added money to their balance sheet. On top of that, they added some recurring revenue into it. And then beyond that, they don't have to worry about managing to casinos, right? It's getting managed for them. So they don't have any extra work to do, which to me, why don't you focus on your existing properties that are already in Vegas? Don't try to like make competition for yourself. Yeah. And so I love the move. I thought it was like the great heist of the year. <laughs> um, and then further reason why they're one of the best out there as far as casino companies go. I love the move. Yeah. I was looking at what Michael Hanna was saying, uh, as far as that's concerned too. He said they also get a 10 year lease. So mm -hmm. it looks like they already had a 10 year you know, so they're going to be making 200, was it 264? 15 million. 215 million for the next 10 years. Yeah. That's crazy. $2 billion. Yeah. It's wild. And I thought it was an incredible business move. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. 
for sure. So anyways, keep an eye on that. That was some side news I just wanted to bring up because I really wanted to put it on my top five stocks, but unfortunately, I already have another casino on there. Yeah. With that being said, you want to get into the top five stocks? Let's do it. All right. So you guys know what it is. Every week, we go over the top five stocks that we were watching this week on Stockwatch Sunday. In Fat Man Zoom, my first one is going to be a penny stock that a lot of people might not be aware of, but I actually bought some. Only takes up around five to six percent of the portfolio that uh, that you guys get to see uh, if you're part of the Chaos Crew, and that is POAI. Now, POAI um, is a biotech company. If you guys don't know them, it's probably not too much of a surprise. They're predictive oncology, and I think that the name of the company is a little bit deceiving. So, what they actually do is that they take uh, take away infectious uh, fluids, that sort of thing, and ORs and surgeries and that sort of thing away from the patient, away from the, uh, so that nurses and the doctors uh, don't have to be so hands-on with it. So they, it's a safe way to take away uh, infectious diseases on patients. Let's just say that, you know, you have a patient that you need to do surgery on, they have hepatitis, whatever. And so this is like, that's one of their main things. They also have other catalysts in the works too, but they were just upgraded last week to $5 a share by um, HCW, it's H, HWC, there, it's, it's a smaller um, HC Wainwright. Yeah, I thought it was HCW. HC Wain, Wainwright upgra- upgraded this to $5 a share. Now, if we look at the chart here, it actually looks... Uh, pretty good here as far as upside's concerned. This obviously popped up. This volume came in because of the upgrade last week. And I think that there's a lot of potential here still. Uh, now, I'm not saying that this is going to the moon. I'm not saying that any of that. Even if this doubles, I'll be happy. I got an average here of about 118. Uh, so I didn't get the absolute bottom, but I didn't get the top either. So I still feel really good about my position. And I think that this could as as we start to see volume continue to roll in here looks pretty good the downside risk is also pretty good this came down as low as 68 cents i want to say a share recently so i think the downside risk is pretty low and you look at where this has moved up now this is on the daily chart this is now sitting up above the 50-day moving average looks pretty good still here in rsi as well so while it's really speculative and we don't have a whole lot of earnings to go off of this week i think that this is definitely one you know you want to take a little bit uh, of a chance on something, POAI could be it. Lots of unusual volume coming in here. Could be one that gets noticed. So for number two, I know on the Chaos crew will be happy with this one. <laughs> What's the one stock I love? Well, there's a lot of them. Clover? I love Big C. Yes. that, that <laughs> <laughs> um, Big C's got to be it. And I've been wanting to... Honestly, just find a reason to bring it to the table. Yeah. Now, Big C, surprisingly enough, in the past six over the past six weeks, has moved up fifty percent, which is nuts. Yes. Yeah. But when you look at it technically, it actually has a lot more room to run. The next stock you have, or sorry, another stock you have later um, that falls into the buy now, pay later category, I think is a similar position. Yeah. Just beaten down tech, uh, money moved away, growth tech speculative and so there were companies like this that that just got hammered and we thought they were good companies i love big commerce's model and so if you guys don't know think shopify but really b2b so they're online e-commerce platforms and they're a little bit more um customizable platforms yeah to me I love their model. I love their angle. Uh, I love the growth opportunities. And I talked about with this with Amazon, which is just one of those other buy forever stock, right? Buy and hold forever. Amazon is is definitely that. I talked about e-commerce. I don't think e-commerce is getting the love it deserves. It is getting love. But what happened with the pandemic and just how everything shifted to e-commerce and how everybody, how just like e-commerce blew up. We said, this is the norm now. And I don't think people realize how much spending is going to incur, occur on e-commerce and how there's going to be continued growth. There's not going to be any slowdown right. in e-commerce and, and what big C does, what Amazon does, what uh, Shopify does, all these companies make it easier to spend and your average revenue per customer, which is like a huge metric for earnings, it's gonna go up because you spend more. It's so much easier to throw things in your cart 
than it is to go to the store um, yeah. and, you know, like, and just grab a couple things, whatever. When you buy things online, you typically spend more than when you're in the store. Yeah. Now, I know there's a couple of you that are just going to be, just going to say that I'm wrong. That's the reality. Okay. So considering that, I think I'd be a fool not to have at least some e-commerce in my portfolio. And if I want something a little bit more speculative, big C has got to be that one. Big commerce is the one. And um, I'm anxious to see what you say or hear what you say about it technically, because I feel like it could be breaking out soon. Yeah, actually, technically, it looks pretty good. Um, this is actually met a resistance now here at around $67. And it's just started to form a 200-day moving average. Now, this is pretty recent because Big C has only been trading uh, for a very short period of time. But nevertheless, a 200-day moving average is starting to finally uh, appear on the chart. So I think that there's definitely some room to run if this breaks up over that $67 mark. But really, the big test is going to be at 69 grow up <laughs> it's true 69 dollars a share is gonna be the the uh, the resistance for big c what's your next stop bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> you're a child you're a child i can't i can't help it <laughs> big c the resistance is 69 i mean that's just too good number three the third stock that I'm watching for this week is going to be Affirm to tie into the e-commerce play. Affirm has had some uh, troubles here. So the big the big problem with Affirm has been that their biggest revenue driver is what? Fat Man Zoom. Uh, Peloton. Peloton. And Peloton's had some issues with recalls and whatever else. So then that also hurt Affirm's uh, revenue stream. But they've been working to diversify that. We also recently heard about the Shopify deal that they have. I've seen uh, Affirm all over the place. I'm a huge Jeep guy. All of my Jeep websites that I get parts from, Affirm is all over them. And really a, a lot of other places too. I got a uh, email from them during Amazon Prime Day. So there, Affirm is doing all the right things. Now they're still losing a considerable amount of money uh, each quarter. They're still operating at a loss of around $50, $50 million. And so this is going to be an ongoing thing for them. But I think that the you look at the uh, the model and uh, the buy now, pay later structure, that's not going away. And, and with e-commerce becoming more and more of a thing, I think a firm stands to benefit substantially from this. And you look at the chart on a firm, the setup is there as well. We look at this and you, you can see how there's a nice little rising wedge pattern after it came up over its cup, cup and handle on the daily. Their resistance here, Fat Man Zoom, is going to be at around 73 bucks a share. And so this looks great. I actually ended up trimming some of my position because I wasn't quite sure where a firm was going to go once it fell back below the $65 range. So I was a little bit nervous about that, but I still hold on to it personally. I have about 50 shares of it. Um, and so we're going to see where this goes. But I feel good about this. The risk reward seems to be, seems to be pretty good. We're going to be coming up on earnings, um, not for another couple of months. So we'll be in September for uh, a firm. But with all the uh, players that they have now and revenue streams, they don't have to focus solely on Peloton anymore, I think that a firm's going to be a good one to hold, and it's got a good risk reward, in my opinion. Definitely a good uh, asymmetrical trade opportunity. Um, excited about it. Buy now, pay later. Another piece of the e-commerce realm yeah. that I don't even think most people, if you said buy now, pay later, I think a lot of people wouldn't even know what that is. Yeah, it's so still very early. Mo most people understand it. We'll see who ends up being the top dog in that. But I think Affirm has a really strong chance of being number one at yeah. that. Now, PayPal, you could probably say that they will they may dominate. But as far as a standalone buy now, pay later company, Affirm to me has it. Who else is there? Afterpay is one. Right. They don't have, I don't know, like that's the only one I can really think of. But I know there's a bunch out there. Keep an eye on that. Number four. Guys, it's Penn. <laughs> you might not be happy with me bringing this up because we talk about it all the time. Probably one of Brad's top three high conviction stocks. The reason why I'm bringing it to the table right now, it's always Barstool. It's yeah. always Barstool. Um, so if you guys did not hear, huge development in the NCAA, which uh, I believe officially as of July 1st, athletes, student athletes can now make money off of what it's NIL, name, image, likeness. This is huge. Number one, it's necessary. Yes. Super necessary. But number two, this 
whenever whenever you can make money off of athletes, there's a huge market there. And um, wouldn't you know, to nobody's surprise, the moment it gets announced, Barstool almost by accident starts picking up athletes. And Dave Portnoy, the the president of uh, Barstool, the founder of Barstool, um, had talked about it on Twitter, and he talked about how it was like almost – um, somebody DM'd him. I think it was a Jacksonville State volleyball player yes. DM'd him. And that sort of set off a series of events that ended with a bunch of other athletes getting on the roster of Barstool. Now, f- for now, there's no money changing hands. It's like free stuff. Um, this means a lot for Barstool. Merchandise, huge revenue there. Exposure, huge revenue there. Um, and I believe that they're going to be able to get the best of the best because student athletes, that age group is like their demographic. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all over the place. So they don't need to have the biggest contracts in biggest endorsement contracts. Right. People are just going to want to be a part of them to be a part of them. And so I'm interested to see how it develops. And I think there's going to be more structured deals rather than these thrown together. Hey, you're on our roster. You get free pizza and free swag. I think eventually there will be more investment into it and more structured investment. But just like they took over the podcast world, they've shown that they're not greedy and they're not going to just suck it dry. I mean, with the podcast world, one of the big things that um, I give them kudos for is they allowed creators to keep their intellectual property, which is unheard of. Now, some say that's a bad business move, but I think that's a great move because it's, first of all, it's not their core business. Yeah. And two, it's like, as time goes on, people are going to realize like there are not many businesses you can trust. And they've shown that they'll take care of their people, take care of their partners. And I think they're going to continue to do it in this space. And they're uniquely positioned to dominate yes. this space. 100%. So I'm excited about it. I agree. I agree with this. And Rudy Brown said they signed over 100 athletes this That's weekend wild. alone. Also, so, no promo. No, they didn't plan anything. Nope. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, and think about this. I mean, what if one of those 100 athletes becomes like a star, yeah. you know, professionally, and then yeah. they, they could continue to make deals with them. Like it, it, the possibilities I think for them are almost virtually endless with something like this. I think it's huge for the industry alone. I also think this is huge for Penn too. So I like that pick. I think obviously, you know, I'm biased on it at this point, but I think that that's still just another really good development for Penn. In general. Is, that, is that your largest holding? Uh, my next stock that I'm going to be talking about, I think is now my largest holding. <laughs> No, no, Penn still is. Just like you, just going all in. Penn still is. But see, I don't, the difference between me going all in is that I just don't go all in on something like GameStop. Gotcha. What are you going all in on? I'm going all in on <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Apple is uh, my fifth stock for, the, for this week to watch. I bought a shit ton of it on Friday. Yeah. And um, I actually ended up selling all of my Spirit Air systems for it. I don't think that Spirit Air systems is a bad stock to own. I always want to make sure that people uh, understand this. I will be back in the Spirit Air systems. It's just not moving right now. And every little thing that comes about, people sell off for. We saw the the Boeing uh, um, cargo plane that crashed in Hawaii and then stock tanks. Boeing tanks, Spirit Air Systems tanked, even though we're continuing to see uh, buy orders come in from all, all these airlines. So Spirit's going to be back. I'm not worried about it, but it moves slow enough to where I feel good about going, going and buying a bunch of Apple. And I'll explain my reasoning why, Fat Man Zoom. We look at the chart here on Apple, and it is officially breaking out. Um, the 138 area, and I got this, my initial position was under 138. Now my average is 138. We look all the way back to September 1st, and Memorial Day weekend was such a shitty day for tech, for tech, big tech in particular. That's when really the sideways action for Apple, all the FANG stocks really kind of started. And in particular with Amazon and Apple, for the most part, ended up moving sideways. Netflix and that's in that conversation too. But 138 is where it retested and then it tanked. Then it came all the way back up to 145. 
Um, but before that, retested 138 again in December, came all the way back up to 145, and then the 10-year yield went crazy, and so then it sold off again, came up and almost retested 138 back in April, and now we have officially broken over that. And so I think that the next stop for Apple at this point is going to be at 145.09, which is its all-time highs. We have earnings coming up this month for Apple. We also have the iPhone, which everybody gets excited for, and we always see a lot of buying uh, during those times. So I think... And we, I made the argument uh, last for why Apple is going to be a stock to watch for just a whole month of July because it was only green 2% on the year. It was underperforming the SPY or the S&P 500 substantially, which is uh, unusual for, for Apple. Yeah. And so uh, I thought that with this breakout, it was going to be a good opportunity to – take a good chunk of change, buy some Apple. And I'm not going to hold the amount of uh, money that I have in Apple in it, in, that I have in it now forever. I think once I see it above 145, I'll take a stop and and, and trim out of uh, a reasonable amount of shares that I have to get back to a, a place where I'm comfortable with as far as risk exposure is concerned. But um, I think that I just wanted to capitalize on this potential breakout because it looks like it's happening. Uh, Michael Han asks, are you expecting people to buy more of iPhone and iMac? I think most of us bought what we need end of last year and the beginning of this year. I'm not sure going on all in now. It seems a little risky. Sure, it's risky, but everybody buys a new iPhone. Not everybody, but like the new iPhone comes out. Everybody wants it. Okay. Sure. Are you asking me? If it's yeah, true? I'm just saying, like, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think there's hype around it. I, I think the question is, we talked about the iPhone upcycle yes. last year. Yeah. Um, I think it's, of those people, how many didn't upgrade? I don't know the answer, yeah, but I, don't I, I, I think there's still a large portion of them that didn't. Um, and you got to factor in people also in that year that are now eligible for upgrades. So, yeah, my only concern is we always talk about rate of growth. Will the growth, you can't just, like there's always going to be some attrition as far as iPhone sales are concerned. So it's still got to see substantial growth. Now, I'm bullish on Apple. I don't agree that everybody bought their iPhones. Yes. I mean, me personally, what are we on, the 13? No, we're on the 12. This is the 13 coming out. Coming up, yeah. I got the 11. And so I didn't get that, like the 12 was like a next like step up. So I don't know if it's 12, people going to 12 to 13, but I think it's like the 11s that are going to jump to the 13, um, which I likely will just because I'll be eligible by then. Um, but I'm not worried about Apple. I think this is a good call, but you know, it's, it's right to be concerned about it, but let's not forget all the other things that Apple's doing. Yeah. iMac, no one cares. Um, iPhone, yes, people care, but they're getting into health. I'm worried about their new their um, Apple TV, yeah. like their Apple Plus or whatever that is, Apple TV Plus. Yeah, I don't think anybody's buying that, to be honest with you. Um, so as far as like concerns for Apple, there are other things that are bigger concerns than iPhone, iMac, but there's a lot of upside. Apple Watch, I think, is slowly becoming a monster. Yeah, I'm excited about that. We'll see. My question for you, though is why sell all of spirit? Why not sell part of spirit? We talk about scaling in a lot. Mm -hmm. What what allocation of your portfolio is in Apple now? Apple takes up like 17% of my portfolio. 17? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've, I, but I've been trimming out of spirit. I've been taking profits on spirit. So this was just me selling the rest of it. Okay. I, I had 350 shares of Spirit at one at one point. I sold the remaining 200 this past so week. So what was your logic behind just getting getting in at such a huge allocation rather than potentially scaling it? To take advantage of the breakout. Okay. And so I'm still setting a stop. Like, So I'm setting a stop in two different places. One is going to be the managed risk. If this falls back below 138, I'm going to cut it to a point to where I feel comfortable with, which would be around 10% of my portfolio. And then if it breaks over 145, I'm gonna take profit at 145 if it falls back below that once it breaks out. And then I'll continue to set my stop if it continues to just rip past 145. But there's, that's my, my strategy, my plan. I have 120 shares. See a couple of people ask me. So I have 120 shares of Apple and um, you know, we'll see where this goes. Some people are like, you know, what about your exposure to travel stocks? Like I thought that you were still on that bandwagon and I am. That's why I have, 
you know, uh, 10% of the portfolio is made up of Marathon Oil. 10% of it's made up of OIH, which is the oil services. I have uh, 13% of my portfolio is made up of Airbnb. Penn is a reopening play. Like, so I have my exposure there. You know, I think that having one of the fangs, I was in Facebook and then Facebook w went crazy after the FTC uh, news. And so I ended up selling Facebook and I sold the remaining of my spirit. And so then I rolled all into uh, to Apple. Wow. Well, good luck, brother. Um, all right, guys, there you have it. Those are our five stocks that we are watching this week. Some of us are allocating 17% of our account, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Apple, too. Um, guys, we sent out a watch list every day before the market opens. Five watch, five stocks that we're watching for that day. Um, I shouldn't say that day, but five stocks that we're watching. We send out every day. It's free. Click the link in the description. You can go ahead and get those stocks. Um, if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, Bodie Bear. How many people we got in the house? There's 150 of you guys watching on uh, on a Monday night for Stock Watch Sunday. So we certainly appreciate that. That's if you guys cool. could hit the uh, uh, thumbs up, we certainly would. Love that. Show us some support. And, uh, and yeah, guys, we're going to do this all over again uh, tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be our, back to our regularly scheduled program now that uh, America's birthday is over and done with. Bro, speaking of allocation, um, I had told you all my green stuff I had set stops on, and yeah. a lot of those stops tripped. I'm 70% liquid. <laughs> That's too much. cash right now. You got to start buying shit. Um, speaking of, the reason why I'm bringing that up, guys, is... This week and probably tomorrow, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing with that 70% because I do want it to go to work for me. It's, it's, um, I purposely put stops in. I knew I was going to have a lot of capital, um, but I also am a little bit more bearish, probably more bearish than Brad is on the market overall. So I'm changing up my strategy a little bit. I want to still be in the market, but what I am buying may surprise you. So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll have a conversation, but I got to use that cash because I just yeah sold. Out That's a of lot. It. That's a lot. Um, but I'm not upset because I'm up thirty percent on the year. So right. I'm not crying. Yeah. So, anyways, guys, make sure you tune in for that. We'll probably bring that over. Um, we we should talk about weed stocks. We haven't talked about weed stocks in a while. We should have a conversation around those. Attention, again, attention hasn't been on those in a while, but attention surely will move towards there. Yeah. So we'll, as we wrap up, a couple questions. Um, top three conviction stocks. Apple. Apple, <laughs> Apple Pen, Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> um, Apple Pen, Airbnb, awesome. The other thing was a community buy. Just an update on the community buy, which is car lots. I did add to it this week. I also had a, I, I already had an order in for it. So that order did fill. So yep. I doubled down on that. Uh, I filled at 515, I believe was my order. Yeah, I was like 519. I was right behind you. Um, it was 515 or 520. And then, um, so it's a little bit up from there, but we should be careful with the volatility. Still not sure if that's continuing the downtrend on the uptrend. Yeah. Um, but. I'm still strong in car lots. I got one more ad in it. I'm not sure about Brad, but I got I one got more. I got plenty of money to add to it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, stay tuned for that. You feeling good about car lots? I am feeling good about car lots. The the price down here is a joke. It is insane. It's a joke. So I mean, again, we're both risking small. I think it's safe to say. But either yeah. way, you know, the the reward could be substantial. So. You be one of those things where you don't have to risk a lot to make a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, speculatively, I try to keep it around five percent of my account. Maybe, I mean, if yeah, I mean, something as speculative as that, as volatile as that, like yeah, five percent is more than enough for me. Yep. Um, so we'll see what happens, but guys, stay tuned. We'll certainly keep an eye on that as well this week. Fed meeting minutes are this week as well, so we'll probably be reporting on that as soon as they come out. I think it's Wednesday, so uh, be on the lookout for that. So we got a lot going on this week, even though it's not going to be crazy earnings or anything like that. Earnings earnings season will start, I think, the week after. So okay, we're uh, getting through this dry spell, Fat Man Zoom, and it's going to be awesome. That's all I got. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. That's going to do it for us. Again, we'll see you tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow through Thursday, as per the usual. And be on the lookout for our, I don't know, what are you going to call it? Interview podcasts of our, our cryptocurrency, Interview. I guess, uh, Buddy. chat. Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be coming out at an undisclosed time. So maybe it'll be a Friday video. I think it'd be good for a Friday. Yeah, and make sure, make sure you guys hit that like, or I'm going to put a hit out on you. 
I'm going to call the Pellucci family. I'm going to tell them to, to put a hit out on you, and they're going to take care of business. Trust me. You don't want to mess with the Pellucci. <laughs> That's going to do it for us, guys. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, is she going to work? Well, I don't know. Hopefully she'll work. We can't even tell. I can tell. I quit this bitch. Bye.